All right. So, for uh, Apostle, we want you to address or to give an advice to young and growing ministers. Young and growing ministers. Okay, so how will a young and growing minister recognize that he or she is called into ministry? Okay, thank you very much. Um, so good to be on this platform. Uh, I want to appreciate uh, the opportunity. So straight to the question, how um, can a young minister recognize that he or she is called, right? And it's very simple. One of the um, ways would be a passion. When you see other people doing certain things that triggers a passion in you, it tells you that uh, there is an affinity you have with that thing. Um, it's just like a wolf standing alone and he sees a pack of wolves on a mountain somewhere um, howling. Um, something in that wolf begins to cry out, um, you know, to um, have an affinity or to do exactly what they are doing. So if you are called into ministry, there will just be this passion triggered in you every time you see someone who is already actively in ministry, particularly the kind of ministry you're called into. And then there are other divine ways by which God may reveal himself, but this is on individual basis. He could come to you in a dream, in a vision. He could speak to you by inspiring your thoughts, by giving you ideas that are related to that field. So I think basically these are uh, the ways by which you know you are. You could recognize your being called to ministry. Thank you very much. Uh, second question is, now that you have recognized that you are called, how do you know when to start? Time, well, most young ministers might not know when the exact time to start active ministry or the preparation time and then the time to start. You know, so how do you recognize when to start? Okay, thank you very much. How do you recognize um, the season of your launching out or the time to start. Now, I'll answer the question by um, breaking it this way. There are three stages um, of, um, I, I would like to say, being pre preparation for ministry. There is a stage where you are called, there is the stage where you are prepared, and the stage when you are sent. The Bible says in Mark chapter 3, verse 14, that Jesus uh, gathered the 12 to himself to be with him and that he might send them. So he called them to be with him for preparation and then he would definitely send them. So you will know it is your season to launch out or you will know it is time for you to step into what God has given to you uh, because God will begin to give you signals to go. He will speak to you in the same way he spoke when he called you. Um, he will begin to, there will be this haste and urgency on your spirit that will be increased, you know, like, like, like it was with the apostles and the disciples. When Paul went to Athens in Acts chapter 17, his spirit was moved when he saw a lot of idol worship. The reason was because he knew he had been sent to reach out to these people. So I think that's how you will know. And then God could also come revelatorily um, to let you know it's time for you to launch out. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Uh, our third question would be how to know your office, the office you are called to function in. You might be a music minister, you might be a word minister, you might be any anything God, any talent, any gift God has given to you, but definitely you are called to function in an office. So how do you know the office God has called you to function in? Okay. Um, <laughs> well, an office is... Uh, an, we know an office as an administrative um, setting or a position where one can function uh, within a given organization or a setting. So, first of all, as God schools you through his word, you will see uh, offices 
and callings in scripture that relates with your desires or with your passion. Let me use the word passion. That relates with um, the format with which God uses to train you. Um, if, for instance, you are called into any of the five-fold ministries, these are um, leadership offices in the body of Christ, God will himself reveal to you. And if you are an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, a teacher, or an evangelist, he will reveal to you that you are called within the five-fold um, leadership offices. And um, if there are other offices that you find yourself being called to, he will still reveal again um, so that you can know that this is where you have been called to function. And he will ensure that the mentorship system around you will be mostly by people along that line or called to that office. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have two more to go. Uh, the fourth question will now be, now that you've known your office, how do you recognize your primary assignment as an individual? Now, this is more of a personalized question. How do you recognize your primary assignment? Thank you very much, sir. Well, let me, let me, in my own understanding, let me differentiate between office and assignment when it has to do with the context of ministry. Office is the capacity or the position of, um, your, of your functioning in the body. And um, it has to do with your, what you'll be equipped with, the knowledge, the skill, and uh, all of that. But the assignment now relates to the people uh, that you will interact with. The assignment relates to your message. Uh, so now that you know, for instance, you are called as an apostle or you are called as a prophet, and you could even be a music minister and still function within any of these offices, uh, you will know your assignment by first knowing your message. You need to know your message. What am I sent to proclaim? Because you're a messenger. And then to whom am I sent? All of this constitutes in answering the question of assignment. And uh, for how long will I um, exist al along this trajectory till there is an evolving? I believe these questions, when answered, will help you to know um, your, your primary assignment. All right. Thank you very much. Now, the last question will be, how to go about your primary assignment. Sorry, how to go about your ministry. How to go about your ministry. You are called into ministry. But how do you go about it? Spiritually, financially, any other thing that is needed to help you, you know, move with speed in your ministry. Thank you so much. Well, generally, we've been talking about being called into ministry. So a ministry is um, a, a position or a place of servitude to God in the body of Christ. Now that you know you are called as a minister and God is sending you to his body, um, you should understand that you will need to be trained. You will need to be trained. You need to be equipped with knowledge. Uh, so there will, first of all, be a system of mentorship around your life. Number one, from the Word of God. Number two, from the Holy Spirit. Number three, from teachers that God places around your life at time to be able to mentor you um, for the fulfillment of your ministry. And then also... Um, your, 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 your mentorship will attack or will address different areas part time. There are times when God will specifically address the spiritual, your intimate life of fellowship with the Lord as the foundation and the bedrock for a successful ministry. There are times where he will tilt into the place of finances. How do you interact with financial resources to fulfill your ministry as a minister? Do you understand how to source for funding? Do you understand how to be able to, you know, create a good bookkeeping system, keep track of the funds coming in 
and the expenditure being made. How do you budget for a project or a program? All of that will be answered along that line. And then socially too, God can tilt your development to the social aspect. You are interacting and relating with people, human beings who are very intelligent species. You will need to understand your physical environment. You need to understand the, the people in that environment. Who are they? What class of people? Are they rich, wealthy, and educated people? Are they middle class, average people? Are they poor people, illiterate? How do you relate with them? It's very, very important. So basically, you will need a lot of training. And the thing about training in ministry is it never ends. It's from one level to another. Jesus called the 12. He discipled them for three and a half years. He left them, went to the cross, died, rose again. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, he kept teaching them for 40 days about the kingdom. And so that was not all. He told them when the spirit of truth comes, he will still guide you into all truth. Um, so basically, you just need to accept that you need to be trained. You need to be prepared. Like 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says, um, that the man of God will be perfect, um, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. So that's, uh, I think, how you can be prepared for ministry. Thank you very much, sir. We well, have been so blessed. God bless you and bless everybody listening. Thank you very much.